Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. We are on day three of our devotional series about finding God in his word. And today we're going to read um, a passage from Hebrews and we're going to talk about how powerful the word is um, and what the power of the word can do for us. Um, again, from the perspective of revealing the character of God. So Join me um, as we start to read this passage in Hebrews. I'm reading Hebrews 4.12 from the, King, the New King James Version. And it says, For the word of God is living and powerful. All right. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit, and, joints, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So I read this passage and it tells me, you know that the word is super like legit right okay so i'm like oh okay i'm reading this and it's like wait the for one the word of god is living okay and powerful and then it's sharp and there's all of these descriptors of the word of god that in in all honesty can be applied to a, a being right an entity or god himself right that god is living we serve a living god that God is powerful, that God is sharper than any two-edged sword, meaning able to divide, decide, divide between the soul and the spirit. He definitely knows what is a soulish thing and what is a spiritual thing. He can, he can make that division, right? And the joints and the marrows, right? He created us. So he, he knows how to divide and separate the joint and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And the scripture already tells us in, in, uh, Jeremiah that who knows the heart? right? Who knows the heart? Who searches the heart and knows the heart? That's God who in, knows the intention of the heart because it's hard. It says the heart is deceptively wicked. Who can know it? Then it says God knows. Why? Because God is the creator of the heart. So he knows. And so as I read this the scripture again, it doesn't equate the word because it, this is not word like Jesus is the word because there's, there is that Jesus is called the word, right? He's the word, the truth and the light. But this is not the word, right? This is not where Jesus in the beginning was the word, uh, the Sorry, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word the word was with God, the word was God. That scripture is about Jesus. That's saying that in the beginning was Jesus, right? He was with God because he was the living word. But this is saying the word of God. It says, for the word of God is living and powerful, not the son of God, but the actual scriptures. Um it's living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And so what is it saying to us? That not that the word is equal with God. That's not the case. We have the Trinity. We have God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. And we, if you want to do some work on that, go ahead and do some work there. But as we go down from that to understand God, he's given us disciplines, different things that we can do. Prayer is one of them. Scripture is another one of them. And so we see that scripture gives us understanding of the character of God. It gives us a picture of what God believes, what he has done, what he plans to do. And so we also see then the scripture is even more than that, more than the instruction, more than the discipline and how we're supposed to live our life. It is a way for us to know him more intimately. And, and it's beautiful because it's like, how can the word of God discern the intentions and the thoughts of the heart? Like, how can it be that powerful if all we're looking to do is find an answer to our situation? We just go into it and like, okay, uh, the answer today for our situation is, oh, okay, for today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to just follow that instruction. That doesn't, that doesn't have any power in the changing, not that type of reading of the word. But when we are looking at the word with the intent to see the character of God, then we start to see, okay, it's living, right? Because it's showing us a living God. It's the reflection of a living God. It's dynamic. It becomes more to us at different times because we need it to be that more, right? You ever read a passage once, never thought about it about it as anything special, then read a passage at a different time and it was like, oh Lord, I see you very clearly here. It's living, it's moving, it's dynamic, it's changing, even though it's in the same binding or different binding, sometimes in big prints and other prints, it's been translated into all different languages. How is it living and breathing? Because it's a reflection of his character, because it is truly God breathed. It is what he's given to us, a part of what he's given to us to know him. 
and sharper sharper than a two-edged blade how is it cutting between the, the the bone and the marrow how is it separating and dividing things because it's sharp it's sharp enough to cut away our misperceptions he is sharp enough his intention to make us well is great enough to divide between what we believed and what we need to believe what is true and what is false what is soulish and what is spiritual it's a divider it's a separator it's a clarifier it's unique it is powerful it's dynamic it's the word of god it's the word of god but it's a reflection of who our God is. And so I just, again, as we go into day three, I want you to think about that. Think about the power of the word to do a work in you. What would change in you if you knew more about the character of God? How would you even in looking at scriptures and in applying doctrine in distant, different disciplines and whatnot, if you knew the character of God, how would reading that scripture be different for you? Because it changes me, right? There are some things I was raised in believing that I'm sure the people who taught me it believed it was the best but when I started to know the character of God I had to abandon some of those thoughts because they didn't make sense with the character of God I said no he can't mean that by this scripture because if he meant that by this scripture he would lose and abandon his character so somehow we've applied a human character to a God that is divine no I'm going to go back and find his character <laughs> and then I'm going to apply it to the scripture why because he's already told me who he is i don't need to add my 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 conjecture to it he in this word has given me an, an ability to see him he's reflected himself in his word and he intends for me to take what he has given me not what other people have given me to be the truth and this is why we follow we research we read we study we know we are in the word because it has power to show us God and God has power to change us. And so our hearts and our desires and our soul and our spirit and our bone and our marrow and what's right and what is wrong, right? And what 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 is what is our intention and what is his intention, what is the will of God and what is just something that we have decided to do, those things become clear when we're looking at the word wanting to know who he is when we're really looking for the depth of his character. So I want to invite you, now that we're on day three, to really experience the power of God and how the power of God comes from his character and is reflected in his word. Enjoy. Enjoy that. Enjoy that process of learning with him. And we'll be praying for you. We, will pray, we are praying that you are healing, living, and growing. And we hope that you join us again tomorrow for another devotional. Until then, be blessed.